That was such a beautiful practice this morning. And I felt inspired after talking, you know, with my mom who was asking you some questions about how the seven keys might differ from what she does with her class and the eight brocades. Like, can you explain a bit about your journey and how you came to Qigong and to the seven keys? Yes. Um, after all these years of practicing Qigong now, it's been about, um, oh, at least 20 years. Um, what happened for me was I had the great opportunity to uh, study with a couple of really great Qigong masters. And as my journey progressed, there were uh, a number of forms and a number of practices that I really resonated with, but they were from different schools. So what I did, um, you know, a number of years ago is I took these disparate elements that I really liked, these different forms that I had learned from different teachers, and I put them into our own unique practice, which I called the seven keys of Qigong. And so each of these forms in the seven keys, uh, some of them may be familiar to other practitioners who have studied in different schools, but the actual seven are unique. Um, and each of these forms uh, open up different meridians in the body. They work on different internal organs. And so uh, these seven keys are very powerful when they're put together. And that's what makes uh, Life Force Qigong its own unique entity. So uh, that's how it happened. <laughs> Great. And would you also share, because maybe some people, you know, haven't joined you yet for a class and are wondering a little bit how a class unfolds. So can you maybe give a little overview of how you structure the classes and what people can expect when they join us? Yes. Uh, we always start the class with a little bit of meditation, a little bit of standing meditation. And then we move from that meditative state into some warm-up exercises, um, which help to warm up the body and to work on our flexibility. And then as we move through the warm-ups, we come to uh, the seven keys, which I was just uh, speaking about. And we also do other sets of forms. We do a set called the Four Shaolins, uh, that's very, very powerful. And we do other modalities and Qigong forms that I've learned over the years. So all of this is very unique. And then at the end, we do another uh, meditation. Usually if we're in the park together, we sit for this meditation and uh, it takes about 20 minutes and it's really beautiful to meditate together. One of the things that I'll say is that you know, Qigong combines this beautiful practice of breathing and movement and using the will or intent to guide the breath. Because the breath is qi, the breath is energy. And so in Qigong, we're moving the breath in a way, moving the life force in a way that brings healing to the body. And so this is very important. Breathing is the most important aspect of Qigong. Beautiful, thank you. And how about sharing a little more about how you came into, I mean, Qigong, obviously we're talking about Qigong specifically now, but your background includes other things, including yoga and Tai Chi. And so would you share a little bit about your journey of how you came through all of that and how you integrate that all? Yes, I have been practicing yoga for many years, uh, teaching for many years. And then, uh, you know, I, I was just really drawn to um, Tai Chi practice initially. I had been studying Taoism, which is uh, the philosophy that these practices come out of. And uh, so my first encounter with uh, these Chinese practices were through uh, my Tai Chi teacher. And so initially I practiced Tai Chi for a number of years and uh, was getting more involved in Taoist meditation. And then uh, back in 
the mid 2000s, 2004 or so, I moved to Hawaii. And that's when I began to teach myself after my master told me that, uh, it, that I could go ahead and lead classes. And so I led classes in Hawaii, uh, Tai Chi classes actually initially. And while I was in Hawaii, I had the great opportunity to study with a Qigong master there and then began to incorporate more Qigong into the Tai Chi practice. And then there was a period of time I was teaching both Qigong and Tai Chi. And then over the years, it seems that um, of teaching, it's become more and more Qigong because I find that Qigong is easier for people to learn initially. Um, tai Chi takes a really great um, commitment and uh, even to learn the 24 forms, the basic set of uh, forms uh, takes a, a long commitment. But with Qigong, people can do just a little bit and feel a great benefit. So it's a little bit easier to learn, a little bit easier to get moving and get it to, to where you can start uh, feeling the benefits in your life. And so that's been going on for the last 20 years here. Wonderful. And how for you does the, those practices connect and maybe even amplify the meditations and how do those interact? That's a great question. Uh, for me, there are a lot of people that start with meditation. Uh, they come to the meditation classes and they get a great value out of the meditation, the Taoist and the Buddhist meditations that I teach. However, there are those that end up coming to uh, Qigong. Uh, sometimes they start with Qigong. But my feeling is, is that most people that uh, come to Qigong and end up practicing for a while they find that it really enhances their experience of meditation. You know, Qigong is often called, as Tai Chi is, meditation in motion. So we're able to learn to meditate with our eyes open and be very present in our body with our breathing as we move. And then the wonderful thing is, we usually find that after you do a session of Qigong and you sit down for meditation, meditation is much, much easier and much deeper because you're actually centered in the body, your body is relaxed. So my experience for me, and I would say that uh, all of the students that have come and practiced Qigong for a while, have that same experience of that meditation becomes much easier. It becomes much more natural and easier to settle and be present in the body. Fantastic. So one more question that pops in our spontaneous. <laughs> our spontaneous dialogue. Yes. Yes. It's about the Tao tribe and how maybe for people who haven't been with you yet, share a little bit about the Tao tribe in quote unquote the regular times and then how you've shifted to adapt in this current situation and how people can reach you and find out more if they wanted to be part of the qigong and or the meditations it's been a wonderful experience actually um, during the pandemic um, because through using the zoom platform uh, we've actually been able to reach more people so the meditations have actually had more people coming and uh, being able to come to the meditation from outside our local area. So we've had people joining us from Seattle, from Sedona, Austin, and this has been a really wonderful benefit from everything that's happened. And so um, as people get more and more involved, as we go back to uh, you know, opening up and being together physically again, then I'm going to continue with the Zoom platform to allow those people who have discovered us and have come into the Tao tribe from outside this area so that they can continue to participate in the meditations or the Qigong. Uh, so that's been a really uh, wonderful benefit. And so I would just say for anybody that wants to discover these teachings, 
the Taoist and Buddhist teachings that we practice together, you can do so through our uh, website <clears throat> at DaoTribe.com. That's T-A-O-T-R-I-B-E.com. You can sign up for our weekly newsletter there that comes out uh, once every couple of weeks. That, that has updates about our classes. I write a blog that you can read. Um, and so that's one way that you can reach out. The class schedules are there. And, uh, you know, you can find out more and more about this. You know, one thing I'll say, the Dow Tribe community has been together now for 10 years this year. And it's a really, really beautiful community. Um, the people that come to the meditations are very welcoming, very open. And so... You know, we find that with Taoism especially, it's very, very simple. It's about flowing with the present moment and really being present here in this eternal now and being in alignment with the flow of our life so that we're not fighting and resisting. We're not uh, living in the past or the future, but we come into the simple harmony of living in the flow of the present moment. And another name for the present moment is the Tao, the way, the flow of things as they are. So in Taoism, we learn to go with that instead of fighting and resisting the current. We move with it. And then we find our life becomes much more peaceful, much more easy, much more relaxed. And this is a teaching I feel that is really for our times now as we move through these challenges. All of us know that we're living in a period of great uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next year. But if we look here and now and we just relax into this present moment, there's a great certainty. There's a great surety right here. We know exactly where we are. We can relax. We can open to the blessings that are here and now. And of course, this has always been true of our life. We've always been here. But now people are really having the opportunity to bring their awareness back to the one place where there is certainty and there is surety and there is security. And that is right here and right now. And that's another way of describing the flow of the Tao. Awesome. Anything else in this spontaneous exchange that um, I haven't asked you, but that you would like to share? Yes, I, I just want to share and emphasize to everyone right now how important it is to really be a part of a community, be a part of a practice that is uh, about health and well-being, uh, about really coming to what I've been speaking about. We all, there's so many people right now feeling a lot of anxiety and they're feeling a lot of uns unsurety, as I said, a lot of uncertainty. And they're beginning to realize that they just do not have the control over their life that they thought they did. We can't force or press or make something happen that we wish would happen. So there's a lot of uncertainty and anxiety. But these ancient practices, these Taoist Buddhist practices, they enable us to relax and to move in harmony with the way things are. And in that, we find our way through this with grace, with peace, with joy. And so I really feel that this teaching is the teaching for our times, and it can really, really benefit uh, those that are looking for a way to stay in harmony with the way things are, and be able to move through this time with joy and celebration and that is always possible. And in my experience, no matter what challenges we're moving through, we can always move through this time, those challenges in our life, with a sense of gratitude, with a sense of celebration, and a sense of joy. And we can do that very simply by being with our breathing, being present here, and by doing these other very beautiful practices that we do in the Tao Tribe. So join us. Thank you, everyone.